Today we're talking about Asian forest scorpions and we're starting right now. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy these species specific care and husbandry videos or all things tarantula and scorpion related, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on all notifications by clicking that bell. That way, you won't miss any videos I upload in the future. Now, last month, I made a video covering the emperor scorpion, and a lot of you all left comments and sent me messages asking me to cover the Asian forest scorpion. So, today, that's what we're gonna do. Metris longimanus, also known as the Asian forest scorpion or the Malaysian black scorpion, is a terrestrial tropical scorpion that is native to India, Malaysia, and Indonesia. This species of scorpion loves to burrow deep and hide out during the day. Also, unlike some other popular scorpions in the hobby, this species does not do well on sand and needs a more humid environment. There are a few other popular species you may find being sold in the hobby under the same name as the Asian forest scorpion. Heterometris spinifer and Heterometris petersi, with the petersi seeming to be the most commonly found in the hobby. To complicate things further, these species are often mislabeled and misidentified and sold in the hobby as emperor scorpions. But the Asian forest is more defensive than the emperor. Also, the Asian forest has a black telson or stinger, whereas the emperor has an amber-yellow telson. The emperor also has larger claws in proportion to its body, and their claws are very bumpy and have a granulated texture to them, whereas the Asian forest claws are much more smooth. The emperor scorpion is from Africa, tends to burrow more, and is seemingly more docile than the Asian forest scorpion. I wouldn't describe the Asian forest as aggressive or even defensive, but they do seem a little more apt to try and pinch you or even use their stinger when they are very annoyed. But even if you were to be stung, their venom is not known to be medically significant. It is possible to keep this species communally if you give them plenty of room and multiple hides, as some people have had success. Generally though, it is not considered a good idea and a little risky due to their territorial and defensive behaviors. It isn't so much that they are naturally communal, but possibly just tolerate living in close quarters with other specimens in ideal circumstances. Personally, I do not keep the species communally at this time. They each have their own enclosure. I keep my Asian forest scorpion in a 10 gallon aquarium filled up a little over halfway with substrate. You can use a 50-50 mixture of peat moss and organic topsoil and throw in a few handfuls of sand for a cheap and effective substrate. Sometimes I also use jungle mix or creature soil if I just want something that is quick and pre-made. I get the substrate damp but not soaked. You want the substrate to be damp enough that you can squeeze it in your fist and not have water seep out of it. I put two hides on either side of the enclosure and spread peat moss and dry leaves across the top of the substrate. I also provide a wide and shallow water dish. Scorpions can get stuck in a deep water dish and can drown, so it is important to provide them with a shallow dish that they can easily crawl out of. I place a heat mat on one side of the enclosure on the side of the glass, not underneath the enclosure. These scorpions will burrow down to escape light and heat, and if the heat pad is on the bottom of the enclosure, the more they dig down to find a cooler environment, the warmer they will become, and this can be fatal. Putting the heat pad on the side of the enclosure helps give them a temperature gradient across the enclosure so they can better find a comfortable spot. It is important to also use a thermostat that your heater is plugged into to help moderate the temperature and keep it in the desired range so they do not get too warm. This can also help minimize any danger of the heating pad overheating and catching on fire. I keep one side of the enclosure damp by gently watering the substrate on that third of the enclosure once or twice a week and not letting it dry out. I also put a bunch of sphagnum moss on that side to help keep the humidity up. The other side I let dry out and only water it down maybe once every four weeks, but not too much. If you keep the enclosure in a room that is at or above 
12 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, there really is no need to use any additional heat source. And many keepers have kept their scorpions alive and healthy for many years with no need for heat pads. As far as feeding, I give my Asian forest scorpions three large crickets every week or two, but base the frequency upon their size. If they're looking thin, I will feed them more often, and if they are starting to look very plump, I will feed them less often. I don't feed more than a few crickets at a time, so I can be sure that the scorpion actually ate them and the crickets didn't just die off. It is important to spot clean the enclosure a day or two after feeding and remove any uneaten prey as they can attract mold and mites since the enclosure is on the humid side. You can also set the species up in a bioactive enclosure where there are isopods and springtails that will break down any uneaten prey before mites or mold can develop. Overall, this is a fairly simple scorpion to take care of. They grow to a nice large size and can be seen wandering around their enclosures at night. Very rarely do I ever see my scorpions out during the day, but occasionally it can happen. Just make sure you give them plenty of substrate to burrow and keep the substrate slightly damp. I prefer using the Biodu Terra Arena substrate as it holds moisture and shape very well and helps support a bioactive environment. I have a link down in the description where you can get $10 off your order if you want to try it out. Jungle mix and creature soil seem to work very well also. You can even just use a mix of peat moss and potting soil that has no fertilizers or other chemicals. I just wouldn't recommend straight cocoa fiber as I have not had much luck using that substrate with this scorpion. The cocoa fiber seems to dry out too quickly, not hold its shape, and the burrows are prone to collapse. Or if the substrate gets a little too damp, mushrooms and mold can start to take over. This is a fascinating and readily available species in the hobby and will make an amazing addition to your collection. If you've never kept a scorpion before, but you're interested in getting a start in that aspect of the hobby, this is one species I can highly suggest for beginners. This was the first scorpion I ever owned. I picked it up at a pet shop. It was on sale. They were clearancing it out for some reason, so it was only like $7.50. But the price for these can vary widely, depending on where you are, what the availability is, what size it is, and what species of Asian forest scorpion they claim it to be. But it's an awesome species to add to your collection, and I find them fascinating to watch at night. If there are any other scorpions, tarantulas, or pretty much any invert you would like to see me make a video video on in the future, make sure to leave that suggestion down below in the description. If you want to catch up on all my past scorpion and non-tarantula videos, just check out this playlist right here. And if you haven't listened to my new podcast, just check out this playlist right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>